tonight. Thank you for the good singing of the choir. Appreciate all of your presence in the service tonight. Good to see all of you. Amen. Seems like it's been a long time since Sunday and glad to be back in the house of God tonight. Uh, I have one announcement that was handed to me on Sunday that I'd like to read to you. It says the senior class of Robert B. Glenn High School announces this commitment ex commencement exercises Thursday evening, June the 9th at 7.30 in the Glenn High School Stadium. And this announcement comes from one of our seniors who will be in that graduating class, Miss Bella Pardue. Or let me, let me be official with her, Isabella Pardue. Amen. And uh, we appreciate that so very much and appreciate that announcement. Uh, hadn't been that long ago since I graduated. And uh, well, that Curry boy been playing in the NBA for 12 years. He just graduated from college. It ain't that far out. You know, I got a high school diploma. <laughs> I did get one, amen. Might have been in the bottom of the pile, but I got it, hallelujah. Let's take our Bibles tonight and turn to the book of 1 Peter, chapter number 2. 1 Peter, chapter number 2. I want to read some verses tonight from 2 Peter. And uh, then I'm going to read a little portion of Scripture over in the book of Jude, if you want to find both of those places. Find the book of Jude and just put your finger there. And then I want us to look at some verses tonight in the book of 1 Peter chapter 2 and then 1 Peter chapter 4. I'm not going to preach a real deep message tonight. Most of mine aren't real deep anyway, but I just want to encourage us tonight. I just... I, I, I need some encouragement. And uh, I, we can find it from the Word of God. And I just want to try to encourage you tonight uh, in these days in which we live. Well, I tell you, I um, try not to get caught up too much in, in the way things are going in, in this country and around the world, but, but we can't help it. We're, we're in this world. We're not of this world, but we're in it. And we're in it until the Lord takes us out by the grave or He takes us out by the cloud, whichever one He chooses to do for us. And uh, we just need some encouragement. So tonight, uh, I've titled my message just very simply, Don't be afraid to stand for your faith. Just, just don't be afraid to stand for your faith. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse number 7. Unto you therefore which believe, He is precious. But unto them which be disobedient, the stone which the builders disallowed, the same is made the head of the corner, and a stone of stumbling, and a rock of offense, even to them which stumble at the word, being disobedient, whereunto also they were appointed. Now we see a lot of that today. Uh, you know, the Lord has given us His word, and unto us, those of us who have chose to believe it uh, and to trust Him, He's precious to us. Uh, Jesus isn't precious to the world. The world don't love Him. Matter of fact, the world hates Him. And the world, uh, He said the world would hate us because we loved Him and not them. They're going to hate us. But unto us that believe, He's precious. And His Word and His salvation is available to whosoever will. But there's been so many that have turned their backs on Him have rejected Him, and uh, now uh, we're in a situation in our generation where we're about as far away from God as I believe we've ever been. And we just keep seem to just be heading further and further away as, as hard as we can go. But he says in verse 9, But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of Him who hath called you out of darkness into His marvelous light. Don't be afraid to stand for your faith. He, sa he tells us to do that, that we should show forth His praises and, and praise the One that's called us out of darkness to marvelous light. 
Now look over in chapter 4 of 1 Peter. Peter talks to us again about the condition of our, our land and our day. He says, Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you as though some strange thing happened unto you. But rejoice inasmuch as ye are partakers of Christ's sufferings, that when His glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. If ye be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are ye, for the Spirit of glory of God and of God resteth upon you. On their part He is evil spoken of, but on your part He is glorified. So He tells us here that we shouldn't think it a strange thing if we start having to go through fiery trials of our faith. Our faith gets tried. Uh, it gets tested many times. And uh, the Lord does that on purpose to make us more like Him, to draw us closer to Him. And uh, Peter said, you know, when, when it comes time for our faith to be tried, he said, don't think it's a strange thing when you go through that fiery trial. So I say again, don't be afraid to stand for your faith. Don't be afraid to stand for your faith. And then Jude, when, uh, when Jude was writing his epistle, uh, he said in verse 3, it's the only one I'm going to read, verse 3, he said, Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that ye should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. And so we see in the writings of Peter and in the writings of Jude, and these aren't the only two that wrote about that, that uh, we are living in uh, perilous, dangerous days, and perilous and dangerous times. And uh, I believe that we are right on the cusp of the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. I believe that with all of my heart. Now, I don't know when He's coming. He may not come for 50 years, 100 years. He may come tonight before the service is over. I don't know. But I do know that when I read these men's writings, I just have to say amen. Because uh, you're exactly right. 2,000 years ago when God gave you this, well, the Lord could see today. And uh, it was bad then, and it's worse now. And uh, so we see that Jude says that we should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. So don't be afraid to stand for your faith. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you and praise you for the Word of God tonight. We ask your blessings upon its reading and upon its preaching. Uh, we pray that you'd speak to our hearts. We seek from you tonight and from your Word, Holy Spirit, uh, some encouragement uh, to go forward in the day and hour in which we live. We ask this in Jesus' name and for His sake. Amen and amen. Now, I got to thinking about this. And uh, it seems like the Lord laid something on my heart that I want to share with you. It seems to me and, uh, that the day in which we live, we live in a society that over just the past couple of years seems to be really coming to the forefront of our society here in America. And it seems to me that this society is being run, or this society is being ruled, if you will, by three words. Acceptance, conformity, and tolerance. Now, it just seems to me that, that if I don't put my life into the world's mold and accept what I'm told is acceptable by society. And if I don't conform my actions and my attitudes to what society says that I should, and if I don't tolerate what clearly is described as sin in the Word of God, then I get labeled a racist. And I get labeled a bigot. 
I get labeled a terrorist. I get labeled a danger to society. And so because I'm a Christian, because I claim the name of Jesus Christ and uh, try my best to live for Him and to proclaim His Word, then all of God's people that are like that in this country are finding ourselves in the process of just being ostracized from society, just being discounted and written off as if we don't matter. We are an outcast if we don't give in to the new normal. I think that we're considered modern day lepers. And the woke culture of today demands that we apologize for our culture, that we apologize for our history and for our way of life. And I, for one, refuse to do that. I am not going to do that. I'm going to stick with the old King James Bible as my guide for my Christian life and as my sole authority in all matters of faith and practice. Now that's where, I, if you ever want to know where I stand, that's where I'm taking my stand. I refuse to give in to this acceptance and conformity and tolerance of what God says clearly is sinful, what is abominable to Him, and uh, what is unacceptable to Him. So let me encourage us tonight. Don't be afraid to be different from the world's culture. You don't have to be like the world. You don't have to act like the world. You don't have to talk like the world. It's all right. The preacher said it's all right. And like Brother Randy done the other night, I point to the camera, it's all right for us to stand for our faith and to not be afraid to be different from the world's culture. Let me say also, I, don't be ashamed to be different from the world's culture. You have nothing to be ashamed of being a child of God. They call us all kind of smart names. They, we take a stand for Christ today. We're looked at as funny and strange people. They think we're narrow-minded and archaic. But let me tell you something. Don't you be ashamed to stand against the world's culture and stand for Christ. And then don't be apologetic. I, that, 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 that bothers me more than anything. You know what the study of apologetics is? The study of apologetics isn't the study of making apologies. The study of apologetics is the study of the defense of the gospel. Just like what Jude said. And so I, I want to talk about that for just a little bit tonight. But now, when the world out here is uh, giving us a rough time and uh, sending us through the fiery trial, and, uh, you know, every time you turn around, just this past Sunday, another shooting out in California, I've not heard what the motive was. I've not heard what, the, what was going on. Uh, but I heard, you know, they, they infiltrated the church, waited till I got in there. Everybody greeted them, treated them well, and then they go to shoot. And uh, that, that is not, we are not exempt at Welcome Door Baptist Church from that happening. I don't, I don't mean to sound fatalistic, I don't mean to sound scary, but you can take comfort that we've got a good security team, and I think they do a good job keeping us safe so that we can worship in here in spirit and in truth. But hey, let me tell you something, we're not exempt from it. Nobody is exempt from it. But I choose not to live in a bubble. I choose not to deny my faith and to deny my Savior's name. I choose not to go into hiding somewhere and be a closet Christian because I'm afraid of what the world's going to think of me. I ain't never cared what the world thought of me to begin with. Amen? I've never been in any kind of popularity contest with the world, and I don't think we should be. I think the only one we need to seek to please is the Lord Jesus Christ. And so when the world calls us all these names and they, they want to persecute us and, and all this, that, and the other, I, I, I want us to be able to stand true. And I want you to look back in 1 Peter chapter 2, and I want you to look at what, what Simon Peter called us. I want you to notice something here. In verse number 9, Simon Peter is talking about Jesus is precious to us that believe that those who reject, uh, He has become a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense. And he says, but, I like that word, but. He says, ye are a chosen generation. That means we're a chosen family. The Bible says, Jesus said, I chose you. You didn't choose me. I chose you. We're a chosen family. 
I'm here tonight, I'm standing here tonight, not because I've done one single thing, except believe on the Lord Jesus Christ that I might be saved. He did stuff. He paid the price. He's, he does the keeping, and, and, and He's building me a home in heaven, and uh, life is good. Amen. Because as long as it's good in the Father's house, it's going to be good down here where we are. You're a chosen generation, a chosen family. He says you're a royal priesthood. We don't, we don't have to go to a man to pray to God anymore. We don't have to go to a man for anything. We go right to the throne of grace, to our great high priest, the Lord Jesus Christ. And the Bible says that when we go to His throne of grace, we can find mercy and grace to help in our time of need. I don't need anybody else, amen? As long as I've got the Lord Jesus, He's all that I need. He says we're a holy nation. A holy nation that has had the holiness of Christ imputed unto us. He says you're a peculiar people. Now that don't mean we got three eyeballs and antennas running out of our head. That word peculiar there literally means a purchased possession that is preserved. We are a purchased possession, a peculiar people. We've been purchased by the blood of Jesus Christ and we are preserved unto the day of Jesus Christ. Amen. Nobody, nowhere, no time can take our salvation away. He says we're a, a praising people that ye should show forth the praises of Him. I like praising the Lord, don't you? I like raising my hand a little bit, saying hallelujah, praise the Lord. Amen. You like doing that? Well, say it. Amen. Say amen. amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Those are church words. Amen. You don't see the world running out here around here and we're hollering glory to God. You don't hear the world running out here hollering hallelujah or amen. Make it part of your vocabulary. It used to tickle me to death. I'd go to meetings at the hospital and uh, we'd be in there and they'd say something I agree with. I'd say amen. they said, say, all right, preacher, you ain't in church. I said, don't matter. It's part of my vocabulary. Amen. If I agree with it, amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Anything good, praise the Lord. That ought to follow any good news. He says, we're a called out people. He said, who hath called you out of darkness? And we're an illuminated people. He says, he called us out of darkness into marvelous light. Now, did you count how many descriptions that Peter gave us? There's seven. And seven is God's number of completeness and spiritual perfection. And so tonight, I just, want you to, I just want you to not be afraid to stand for your faith. So let me give you this, and we'll be done. Let me say, first of all, don't be afraid to be a New Testament Christian. Don't just say, I'm religious. Don't be afraid. Be a New Testament Christian. And we look, and we look, and we got the whole New Testament to look at for our example. Uh, for, uh, for the, look at the lives of the apostles. Look at the lives of... Uh, the lives of those that followed the Lord Jesus Christ whose lives and actions are recorded in the Word of God. Those are good pop patterns to follow for your life. We don't need to follow men. We need to follow the Word of God. The Bible tells us in 1 Peter chapter 2, if you still have your Bible open, look with me over beginning in verse number 21, and it tells us to be a New Testament Christian. We should follow Christ's example. The Bible says, For even hereunto were ye called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that ye should follow His steps. Well, now how, how do we follow the example of Christ? Well, it's right here in the Bible. Who did no sin. That's a tall order right there, isn't it? Don't, don't, don't raise your hand, but how many of you sinned today? I did too. Amen. All of us have. It says that he did no sin. Secondly, neither was guile found in his mouth. The tongue is the deadliest of all blunt instruments. It has done more to destroy churches and relationships and marriages and homes and, and friendships than any other instrument ever made, including guns, cannons, tanks, and bombs. The tongue has done more to destroy. But the Bible says that Jesus did no sin, neither was guile found in his mouth. The Bible says in verse number 23, when, who when he was reviled, reviled not again. When he suffered, he threatened not, but committed himself to him 
that judgeth righteously. I'll tell you something, when somebody riles you up, when somebody riles you up, the Bible says that Jesus didn't get riled up back at them. The Bible says that when he suffered, he threatened not. He didn't threaten retaliation. He didn't threaten, I'm going to get you back or you're going to pay for this. But the Bible simply said he committed himself to that to him that judgeth righteously. You know what that's telling us today? We're going to let God handle this. Hey, hey, listen, this is a lot easier to preach than it is to live. And then he said in verse 24, Who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we being dead to sins should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes ye were healed. And so we're to live righteous lives. There's a good, that's, that's good scripture. If you, if you ever say, you know what, I want to I see what the example that Jesus left for me, you don't have to go all through the Gospels, go right there. It'll tell you exactly the example that He left. But you know what, being a New Testament Christian not only means following Christ's example, but Paul shared with Timothy that as a New Testament Christian, we're to be an example to other people. He said in 1 Timothy 4.12, Let no man despise thy youth, but be thou an example of the believers in word, in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, in purity. He tells us those areas where we're to be a Christian. So don't be afraid to be a New Testament Christian. Second, don't be afraid to be a dependent Christian. We call ourselves independent Baptists, and we are, because we're independent of any kind of conference or or a, 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 a conclave or whatever, uh, we are autonomous. That means that we answer to the Lord. Amen? Uh, my, my boss is not some down the road in another place. My boss, my manager, my shepherd is the Lord Jesus Christ. And he's the one that I answer to, you see. And so uh, to be a dependent Christian literally means I'm going to have to be dependent upon Christ. Now Peter told us that in 1 Peter 5, 7. He says, cast all on him, for he careth for you. We can be a dependent Christian. And we, and I'll tell you what, I believe as these days go forward, unless the Lord intervenes and turns this place around, we're really going to start having to be dependent Christians. I just believe things are probably going to get worse before they get better. But 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 how do we depend on him? Well, we rest in him. We find our rest in Christ. David said in Psalm 37, 7, he said, Rest in the Lord. And wait patiently for him. Fret not thyself because of him who prospereth in his way, because of the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass. Now, that's hard, isn't it? We, it, it? Why does it seem like that all the evil people and all the wickedness seems to be getting along just fine out here? And people are trying to live right and do right, just struggling all the time. Well, let me tell you something. The Bible tells me in that verse of Scripture that I'm not to fret myself over that but I am to rest in Him and to wait for Him. David said in Psalm 59 verse 9, he said, Because of His strength will I wait upon thee, for God is my defense. God fights our battles. God fights our wars for us. We don't have to go out there. He does it for us. We rest in Him, wait on Him, and above all, pray to Him. I hope you have a good prayer life. Uh, Philippians 4, 6 is one of my favorite verses. Be careful for nothing. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, make your request known unto God. I just like that language. Be careful for nothing. So don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to be a New Testament Christian. Don't be afraid to be a dependent Christian. And, and don't be afraid, as I said in my title, to exercise your faith. Don't be no closet Christian. Amen. Stand up for Him out here in the general public. Let people know who we belong to. Amen. Not deny His name or, or try to shirk off somewhere when a little confrontation gets started and somebody starts talking about Jesus and somebody starts picking it or making jokes or what have Stand up for your Lord. He stood up for us on the cross. Amen. He stood up and, and he preached the word and he stood up and he brought us a new way and they, they, they killed him for it. Amen. He, he gave his life for that. At least we can do stand up for him and give a word for him. Exercise your faith. The Bible tells us 
that faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. So build your faith on the Word of God. When you put faith in what God reveals to you in this Word, He gives you more light. That's what He told us in Romans 1.17. Uh, for herein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. We're walking a progressive path that's going to lead us to heaven. And it's a dark path in this dark old world. But the light of the Word of God shines down upon our steps. Uh, thy Word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. And when I put faith in what God shows me, He gives me more light and gives me more light and gives me more light. And one of these days I'm going to walk into the light and I'm going to be home in heaven. Amen. Build your faith on the Word of God. Build your faith on your past successes. Jude said that. We mentioned Jude a while ago. Well, in verse 20 of Jude, he said, but, but, but ye beloved, build up yourselves on your most holy faith. Build your faith on your past successes. Amen. What God has done before, He'll do it again. And let me say something to us tonight. That living by faith does not mean that we live by circumstances. We don't live by whether things are good or whether things are bad. We live by the promises of God. That's what we live by. And the Bible said in 2 Corinthians 1.20, For all the promises of God in Him are yea and in Him amen unto the glory of God by us. So don't be afraid to exercise your faith. Don't be afraid to be a New Testament Christian. Don't be, a, don't be afraid uh, uh, to... To, to stand up for the Lord and be a dependent Christian. But lastly, I'll give you this. Don't be afraid to tell others about Jesus. All they can say is no, or I don't want your track, or I don't want to hear it. That's fine. That's their choice. If they want to die and go to hell, they, that is their choice. They can do that. I heard a preacher one time, they asked him, he said, what'd you preach on this morning? He said, well, you ain't going to believe what I preached on. He said, what? He said, I titled my message, You Can Go to Hell. But that got their attention, didn't it? Amen. So rare back from the pulpit and let that loose out there. But that was the point. You can't, that's up to you. But you know what? There's a lot of people that'll never know how to go to heaven unless somebody tells them how to do that. And have a burden. Have a burden before you start trying to tell somebody. I, you, you, I, listen to, I listen over here to Rita. Rita always has prayer requests about somebody that's lost. And she says, I got a burden. You ever notice when she lifts up her prayer? She says, I got a burden. It means her heart's heavy for them. And she wants to see them saved. And I know you have burdens for people as well. And, and the Bible tells us to bear you one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. We need to have a burden for lost people and, and we need to approach them with compassion. That's what Jude said in verse 22 of his epistle. He said, and some have compassion. And then he says, making a difference. Compassion really makes a difference in the lives of people. And then he says in, in Jude 23 also, lastly, about talking to people about the Lord, he said, not only with compassion, but he says with fear. And others save with fear. Pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. That's Jude one twenty three. But you know, Paul, Paul had just got finished talking about heaven in 2 Corinthians chapter 5. He had just got, out of the, got the words out of his mouth about how that we're going to stand before the judgment seat of Christ one day and give an account of, of all the works that we've done. And in verse number 11, he made this statement. He says, knowing therefore the terror of the Lord. We know the terror of the Lord because we've got His Word and we, we read about His terror and, and, and what He has in store for lost people who reject Him. We should want to tell them about Jesus with fear. Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. We persuade men. When we, when we really realize the terror of the Lord and what's awaiting people who reject Christ, that ought to burden us. And so don't be afraid to tell other people about Jesus. I know it's getting difficult out there. 
And I can't even imagine. I'm, I'm sure it's way more difficult in the workplace just in the five years since I retired from public work of trying to give a word for Christ. Did you know, and, I, and I, I'm not saying this in a critical manner. I'm just saying this in a factual manner. I worked for the Baptist Hospital. I don't know what it's called now. I don't think it's called Baptist anymore. And they had a cross on the building. Great big cross. And yet, in, in, the, in their policy and procedure manual, they had it in there plainly that if any employee passes out any kind of printed material, pamphlet, anything like that, that has not been pre-approved by the hospital is a terminating offense, first offense. That told me that if I got caught putting tracks around and they caught me doing that, that was a fireable offense, being fired from my job for sharing the Word of God. But I still left my Bible on my desk and still left my tracks on my desk, and if they wanted one, they could help themselves to it. Amen. And if they started the conversation, I'd be happy to join in with it. You can share Christ. You may have to follow some rules, but you can do it. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Father, thank you for the Word of God tonight, encouraging us from your Word uh, of these great ca characteristics that you have given us about being a chosen people, a royal priesthood, and that on down the line and Lord, you've shared Scripture with us tonight that has told us that it's all right. It's all right for us to be a Christian in this day and time. It's all right for us to stand up for you and to share the gospel. It's all right for us to depend upon you and lean upon you and depend upon you. And Lord, help us. Help us to not be afraid to stand for our faith in this generation. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for coming.